The Decembriana Greek, Decembriana, December events, refers to a series of clashes fought during World War II in Athens from the 3rd of December 1944 to the 11th of January 1945 between the communist insurgents, the EAM, some parts of its military wing, the ELAS stationed in Athens, the KKE and the OPLA from one side and from the other side, the Greek government, some parts of the Hellenic Royal Army, the Hellenic Gendarmerie, the city's police, the far-right organization X, among others and also the British Army. The conflict was the culmination of months of tension between the communist EME ELAS and the Greek government, and also the fights between the ELAS and the Gendarmerie, some parts of the Hellenic Army, the British Army, anti-communist organizations, among others. Regardless of the tensions between the left and the right, on May 1944 it had been roughly agreed in the Lebanon Conference that all non-collaborationist factions would participate in a government of national unity. Eventually six out of twenty-four ministers were appointed by EME. Additionally, few weeks before the withdrawal of the German troops on October 1944, it had been reaffirmed in the Caserta Agreement that all collaborationist forces would be tried and punished accordingly, and that all resistance forces would participate in the formation of the new Greek army. Army, under the commandment of the British. Yet, on December 1, the British commander Ronald Scobie ordered the unilateral disarmament of EME ELAS. The EME ministers resigned on 2 December and EME called for a rally in central Athens on 3, requesting for the immediate punishment of the collaborationist security battalions and the withdrawal of the Scobie order. The rally of some 200.000 people was shot upon by the Greek police and gendarmerie, leaving 28 protesters dead and 148 wounded. These killings ushered a full-blown armed confrontation between EME and the government forces at first which included the security battalions, and during the second half of December, against the full-blown British military forces. The clashes were limited to Athens, while elsewhere in Greece the situation remained tense but peaceful, with the exception of Epirus where Volusiotis attacked the forces of Zervas. The Decemvriana ended with the defeat of EME ELAS, leading to its disarmament in the Varkiza Agreement which marked the end of ELAS. This first defeat broke the power of EME. This together with the EME instigated, Red Terror, was followed by a period of, White Terror against the left, which contributed to the outbreak of the Greek Civil War in 1946. Topic. Background By 1944, the two major resistance movements in occupied Greece, Eads and Eme Elas, each saw the other to be their great enemy. They both saw the Germans were going to be defeated and were a temporary threat. For the communists, the British represented their major obstacle. By the summer of 1944, it was obvious that the Germans would soon withdraw from Greece, as Soviet forces were advancing into Romania and towards Yugoslavia, with the retreated Germans at risk of being cut off. In September, General Fyodor Tolbukhin's armies advanced into Bulgaria, forcing the resignation of the country's pro-Nazi government and the establishment of a pro-communist regime, while Bulgarian troops withdrew from Greek Macedonia. The Axis withdrawal, before the exiled government could return to the country, created a power vacuum. The government in exile, now led by the prominent liberal George Papandreou, moved to Italy, in preparation for its return to Greece. Under the Caserta Agreement of September 1944, all resistance forces in Greece were to be placed under the command of a British officer, General Ronald Scobby. According to historian Donnie Gluckstein, the British actively sought to delay the German withdrawal in order to prevent ELAS from liberating the country. He cites German plenipotentiary Hermann Neubacher. The British arrived in Greece in October Operation Mana with the exiled Greek government and some units of the Greek army, led by General Sakalotos. By then, the Germans were in full retreat, and most of Greece's territory had already been liberated by Greek partisans. On October 13, British troops entered Athens and Papandreou and his ministers followed six days later. King George II stayed in Cairo because Papandreou had promised that the future of the monarchy would be decided by referendum. There was little to prevent the ELAS from taking full control of the country. With the German withdrawal, ELAS units had taken control of the countryside and most of the cities. However, they did not take full control because the KKE leadership was instructed by the Soviet Union not to precipitate a crisis that could jeopardize Allied unity and put Stalin's larger post-war objectives at risk. 
The KKE's leadership knew so, but not the ELAS's fighters and rank and file, which became a source of conflict within both EAM and ELAS. Following Stalin's instructions, the KKE's leadership tried to avoid a confrontation with the Papandreou government. Most ELAS members saw the British as liberators despite some KKE leaders, such as Andreas Zimas and Aris Volusiotis. Zimas was in touch with Yugoslav communist leader Josip Broz Tito, and he disagreed with ELAS's cooperation with the British forces. The issue of disarming the resistance organizations was a cause of friction between the Papandreou government and its EAM members. Advised by British Ambassador Reginald Leeper, Papandreou demanded the disarmament of all armed forces apart from the Sacred Band and the Three Mountain Brigade, which were formed following the suppression of the April 1944 Egypt mutiny, and the constitution of a National Guard under government control. The EAM, believing that it would leave the guerrillas of ELAS defenseless against anti-communist militias, submitted an alternative plan of total and simultaneous disarmament. Papandreou rejected this plan, causing the EAM ministers to resign from the government on December 2. On December 1, Skabi issued a proclamation calling for the dissolution of the ELAS. Command of the ELAS was the KKE's greatest source of strength, and the KKE leader Santos decided that the demand the ELAS's dissolution must be resisted. Tito's influence may have played some role in the ELAS's resistance to disarmament. Tito was outwardly loyal to Stalin but had come to power through his own means and believed that the communist Greeks should do the same. His influence, however, had not prevented the EAM leadership from putting its forces under Scabi's command a couple of months earlier, in accordance with to the Caserta Agreement. In the meanwhile, following Georgios Grivas's instructions, Organization X members had set up outposts in central Athens and resisted the EAM for several days until British troops arrived, as their leader had been promised. The events According to the Caserta Agreement, all Greek forces were under the Allied command of Skabi. On December 1, 1944, the Greek government of «national unity» under Georgios Papandreou and Gen. Scabi, British head of the Allied forces in Greece at that time, announced an ultimatum for the general disarmament of all guerrilla forces by the 10th of December, excluding those allied to the government, the Third Greek Mountain Brigade and the Sacred Band, and also a part of EADS and ELAS that would be used in Allied operations in Crete and Dodecanese, still under German occupation, if it was necessary. As a result, on December 2, six ministers of the EAM, most of whom were KKE members, resigned from their positions in the. National Unity Government. The EAM called for a general strike and a demonstration in front of the Greek Parliament for the next day, December 3. The demonstration involved at least 200,000 people marching on Panepistimu Street towards the Syntagma Square. British tanks along with police units had been scattered around the area, blocking the way of the demonstrators. The shootings began when the marchers had arrived at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, in front of the Royal Palace, above the Syntagma Square. They originated from the pavements, from the building of the General Police Headquarters, from the Parliament Vouli, from the Hotel Grande Britannia where international observers had settled, from other governmental buildings and from policemen on the street. Among many testimonies, N. Firmacus, a then 15-year-old member of the anti eam organization X participating in the shootings, described that he saw the head of the police Angelos Evert giving the order to open fire on the crowd, by means of a handkerchief waved from the window. The sharpshooters had been given a standing order, according to Firmacus, "...don't fire as they are marching, at least up to the tomb of the unknown soldier. When they march to the tomb of the unknown soldier, open fire." Although there are no accounts hinting that the crowd indeed possessed guns, the British commander Woodhouse insisted that it was uncertain whether the first shots were fired by the police or the demonstrators. More than 28 demonstrators were killed, and 148 were injured. This signaled the beginning of the Decembriana Greek, Decembriana, the December events, a 37-day period of full-scale fighting in Athens between EAM fighters and smaller parts of ELAS, and the forces of the British Army and the government. At the beginning the government had only a few policemen and gendarmes, some militia units, the 3rd Greek Mountain Brigade, distinguished at the Gothic Line Offensive in Italy, which, however, lacked heavy weapons, and the Royalist Group Organization X, also known as Cheetahs, which was accused by EAM of collaborating with the Nazis. 
Consequently, the British intervened in support of the government, freely using artillery and aircraft as the battle approached its last stages. In the early morning hours of December 4, ELAS reservists began operations in the Athens Piraeus area, attacking Grivas' ex forces and many police stations with success. In the evening, a peaceful demonstration by EAM members cum funeral procession took place. Government forces took no action but the procession was attacked by cheetahs led by Colonel Grivas, with over 100 dead. Also on December 4, Papandreou gave his resignation to the British commander, General Scobie, who rejected it. By December 12, Eme was in control of most of Athens, Piraeus and the suburbs. The government and British forces were limited only in the centre of Athens, in an area that was called ironically by the guerrillas as Scobia the Scobies country. The British, alarmed by the initial successes of EAM, ELAS and outnumbered, flew in the 4th Indian Infantry Division from Italy as emergency reinforcements. They transferred also from Italy to Athens, as assistant of Scobie, John Hawksworth, who soon took the general commandment. Although the British were openly fighting against EAM in Athens, there were no such battles in the rest of the big cities. In certain cases, such as Volos, some RAF units even surrendered equipment to ELAS fighters. It seems that ELAS preferred to avoid an armed confrontation with the British forces initially and later tried to reduce the conflict as much as possible, although poor communication between its much independent units around the country might also have played a role. This might explain the simultaneous struggle against the British, the large scale ELAS operations against Trotskyists, anarchists, and other political dissidents in Athens, and the many contradictory decisions of EAM leaders. Videlicet, KKE's leadership, was supporting a doctrine of national unity, while eminent members, such as Stringos, Macritus, and even Giorgio Santos, were creating revolutionary plans. Even more curiously, Tito was both the KKE's key sponsor and a key British ally, owing his physical and political survival in 1944 to British assistance. <laughs> <laughs> Battles of Thiseo Macriani Churchill in Athens This outbreak of fighting between Allied forces and an anti-German European resistance movement while the war in Europe was still being fought was a serious political problem for Churchill's coalition government in Britain and caused much protest in the British press and the House of Commons. To prove his peacemaking intentions to the public, Churchill went to Athens with General Alexander, Anthony Eden and Harold Macmillan in Christmas December 25th, to preside over a conference, in which Soviet representatives Popov also participated, to bring about a settlement. The conference was to take place in the Hotel Grande Britannia. Later, it became known that there was a plan by the EAM to explode the building, aiming to kill the participants, which was finally cancelled. The conference took place in Phalera, on the battleship Ajax. From the Greek side took part for Eme Santos, Partsilidis, Mantakas and Sophianopolis and for the government Regent Damaskinos, Papandreo, Panagiotis Kanalopoulos, Sophoulis, Kafantaris, Dimitris Maximos, Stephanos Stephanopoulos, Gennatas, Saldaris and as a special personality Nikolaos Plastiris. It failed because the Eme, ELAS demands were considered excessive. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union remained passive about developments in Greece. True to the informal percentages agreement struck between Stalin and Churchill that placed Greece in the British sphere of influence, the Soviet delegation in Greece did not encourage or discourage the EAM's ambitions. The delegation's chief gained the nickname, Sphinx, among local communist officers for not giving any clues about Soviet intentions. Pravda did not mention the clashes at all. By early January, EAM forces had lost the battle. Despite Churchill's intervention, Papandreou resigned and was replaced by General Nikolaos Plastiras. On 15 January 1945, Scobie agreed to a ceasefire in exchange for the ELAS's withdrawal from its positions at Patras and Thessaloniki and its demobilization in the Peloponnese. The communist guerrillas, led by Santos, evacuated the capital taking thousands of hostages. References, <references>